Hello and welcome back to Stu Structures and the 17th video in the series of Building the Beanery. Stay tuned. Welcome back to another segment of Building the Beanery. In this segment we're going to continue on with that very first building. We have gutter pipes to put on, that chimney to finish and put on. I'm just going to step back and just with a real fine brush touch up a little bit of paint here and there. Uh, the gutter pipes will hide corners and some, some, some areas of, of the building which were a little bit of a concern to me. Uh, but we're going to uh, continue on with that next building that we glued onto that building the last time and work on the roofs for that, some more chimneys for that, uh, and then go on and work on that next hotel building back and uh, see if we can get some paint in that, maybe the windows mounted and maybe get the walls cut for the next hotel building back b b behind that. Um, I'm not sure, I'd, maybe once I get those built we'll start on the one story building that goes in between them and see if I can get some more information on the bridge that uh, went in between those by then and so I can continue on with that as well. So anyway, let's get started and see how far we can get. First thing we're going to work on here are the walls for that first hotel building that I cut in the last video. Um, I want to come back here and you can see I've already cut the windows out of this uh, but I'm coming back and starting to sand down the 45 on the edges of this because I want the corners to meet really tight and I'm not going to go into a lot of depth on all this like I said before though it would be good if you actually used a 45 degree block underneath this against the edge or maybe slightly more than that I, I probably take a little more off of it than 45 degrees because I want to make sure that outside point meets up nice and, and uh, tight on there. And then when I'm done sanding it down I gotta file it. I, I have a whole set of files that I just strictly use for nothing but plastics. Uh, the plastics fill up the teeth in these files just I mean just so fast that it, it's just good to keep them uh, good and cleaned out and using for nothing but plastic. Um, so here I'm just cleaning out my file and getting ready to take down the edge. Now when I did the 45 on the sandpaper, I, it, it, I don't take it clear down to the point. And it, it's just good to come back with this file then and just take everything down to a really fine knife edge on that outer edge of the plastic. And it just takes a little bit of working. Uh, my eyes aren't what they used to be, so I, I use some magnifiers when I'm working on all of this. And I usually work a lot more down in my lap than up on the table like this. And this picture really doesn't do it justice unless you've got a big TV, but there's a really nice fine knife edge, uh, edge on this that uh, comes right up to the very face of the brick. And uh, you know, then I uh, start on this third wall that I, I hadn't shown before, cut and put it together. Went ahead and did a window and or some windows and a door in the middle of it. And this will be the fourth wall to the hotel that I didn't show in the last video. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is come back and do all the painting on this, so I don't have to deal with it so much as a as a structure put together and maybe speed up my process. So I come back with this alcohol. Uh, you know, I've mentioned this before too, but just to get all the oil off my fingers and the plastics and everything out of this, all the paints that I do use are water-based paints. And, you know, gluing to plastic is not their forte, really. Enamels would probably be better, but I just use cheap apple barrel or, you know, any of the various you know, $99.50 paints like this one here from Nicole. Uh, you know, I buy them when they're on sale for 33 to 50 cents a piece and just get tons of different colors. And this is just a nice brick color that I've been using on all the building previously. And I probably could come back with an airbrush and airbrush all this, but uh, you know, I just I don't want to get it out and deal with all of it. It's too cold outside to take stuff outside right now, and I don't want to airbrush in the building here. So what I'm doing is just coming back with a really wide flat brush and just putting a, a basic coat of brick on all, all of the areas that will be exposed on this. Remember this does meet up to those uh, the fourth building that I have the uh, roofs ready to work on behind the original building. And I do, I think I did three coats on this all together to get a not good, nice base layer underneath of it. Um, it's just real thin paint and, uh, you know, it's just cheap paint. So anyway, then I come back with my mortar mix and I, I did mix this a little more paint to the water than I did in the previous buildings that I did. 
and sometimes it's better to uh, just take your paint and actually dab it on versus smear it on the way I'm doing with the brush right here and you can actually watch it just just it just feels its files its way back through all the cracks and you can just watch it just go down into all the cracks all the way down through the whole structure and then once all that's done I put a second coat and a third coat and then I come back with that dabbing effect with the brick paint and then uh, add some of that paint on there too and you know it just uh, gives a really good brick effect I think and here's the first three walls glued together uh, I'm gonna start coming back here and, and working on uh, cornice work too so I need to get these together so I can get the 45s right on the cornice work and I'm just here cutting basic strips for the cornice. There's two different sizes. There's the long, tall, flat piece that mounts up against the building. And then there's a, an angle that sits out from that, which are the thinner pieces here. And I just start gluing all those together. Six of these are long enough that I should be able to do all, um, all the roofs on both of the hotel buildings because each one's longer than you know the long sides and one will do both of the short sides on both the buildings so I just do all that <clears throat> then I'm coming back here with my triangle and to start this off I just I cut a 45 at the right angle that I need out on the edge of uh, one end and then once I get that cut, I come back and put it up against the building to where that inside edge meets one corner really nice and tight. And I go to the far end and then mark it on the edge of the building. So I know I've got the exact size that I need for length on this because I want the 45s to meet really tight on the corners. And each time I cut one of these, I just back drag them and then do a little bit of sanding. And I use my regular testers models to paint uh, and uh, glue the wood to the plastic. It seems to be one of the best adhesives for, for this. And I just use clothes pins to clamp it on there until it's nice and set up for a while. And then I add uh, the two side pieces on as well. And then once I have those two side pieces on, I can come back and add the back on here later. But now you see I've got the back glued on here too. So we have all four walls put together for this uh, first hotel building back here. All the windows and doors are cut out of it, so it's ready to rock and roll and start putting together as, you know, as, a, as a building with all the details, the windows, doors, and everything else on it. Most all the paintings done. Now we'll have to come back and work on the corners of this a little bit where they meet, uh, but here the final cornice piece is in place. Uh, the corners do meet pretty good on the cornice as well as the plastic, but I'm going to come back and do a little bit of filling on the corners and then touch up the paint and make it look a little better. Now the next thing we're going to do is start getting into small details. The chimneys are one thing I want to work on first. and it, This is just a tool that's nice to have in your arsenal. It just clamps to the edge of your desk. I just use mine and break it out when I need it and put it away otherwise. But to do a lot of the work on these chimneys, remember I cut off the molded pipes in these. So I wanted to come back and glue in these pipes that are on the inside center of these instead of the ones that were there. And to do that, I took paper and just clamped, wrapped the chimneys and clamped them in that clamp and then used my drill and drilled out where all the pipes would go in the top of the chimneys and then put these pipes down in there and they are I didn't use a metal for this I did use a styrene uh, pipe for these and then I come back with a knife and just you know kind of drill out the inside of them to where they have a real thin wall on them and uh, then I start to work with some of the paints on it the brick I had previously done on the uh, chimneys but I went ahead and added the mortar into it just like I do all the walls and uh, once I paint the little pipe that goes in the top of it, I'm just coming back here on that very first roof that we did that we needed that uh, one uh, pipe skinny chimney on and gluing it in place on this, uh, this first roof. And then where that meets the roof, I'm going to do the same thing as I did on that vented chimney on that one uh, little side building on the uh, structures. I'm going to put flashing around the base of it where it meets the the roof because this it would have had this in real life and we want to hide the cracks where it meets the roof anyway so just cutting this um, you know flashing down out of just regular tissue paper to a long strip and then I cut four individual pieces out of that and then just glue them on around the base of the chimney so that there's flashing all the way around it 
and then come back and uh, just finish painting the roof and the flashing the same color as the roof at that point. Now I've painted the uh, stand pipe in the center of this and came back and did a little weathering with some uh, black paint around the very pipe itself and inside the pipe and then just a little bit of chalks and uh, black washes down the chimney a little bit to kind of give it that aged and used look. Now the next chore that I had on my list was to get the roofing on this third building back now that the buildings are all connected and we had the structure in place for the roof. So I just went ahead and did this and you can see on the ends of that building there, there are kind of square pieces that stick up to block the runoff from the roof from coming over these short sides. So I'm coming back and adding those short sides on both piece sides of this and adding the standing seams in them and uh, finishing off the roofs. Now I, I did leave the one lower corner that meets this next roof back kind of loose underneath there because I got to wrap that other roof underneath this one a little bit. Uh, so both those corners are not totally done glue wise and then I came back and just put uh, black paint on all that and finished painting this roof so we have another roof painted and finished it's kind of got a sheen to it right now because the paint's still wet in this picture here um, but uh, basically another roof done and another thing off our chore and list of things to do so uh, you know I'm, I'm glad to be getting a lot of these little things done now, the, you know, I had mentioned once before about a couple of people. I want to put a couple on the insides of the buildings. So I had showed you the picture before of the people and the various things I would found to use around the hotel. But I just went ahead and painted up two of these guys in dark blue suits with black ties to kind of look like railroad people to put inside. And then those gutter pipes, uh, the down pipes for the gutter system, uh, you know, these probably would have been copper originally. So I'm just coming back here and putting a base copper wash on those. And I just wanted to show all the extras that I went through as I molded the chimneys because now we have tons of wooden crates and barrels and, you know, just tons of stuff to use for scenery. Okay, so there's another segment of building the beanery. Uh, we did get a good bit accomplished in this. It's nice to start getting some of the walls together for the next hotel back. Uh, I'm going to continue that off, offline and uh, when we come back with the next video, go into that next building as well. Uh, some of this I'm not really showing everything on screen because you know I've went through all this several times in building these various buildings, especially this one with the walls for the first four different buildings that all connected uh, up in front. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's all basically the same process. Uh, I, I just don't need to see to uh, repeat all that every single time that we do another wall. Uh, we just go through the same process. You know, you lay it out, you uh, drill the hole, you use the nibblers, you use the knife, you use the files. Uh, and it's always the same process over and over and over. Uh, but getting into some of this detail, I am going to show more and more of that as we go through and how I'm adding some of that on. And, you know, using the pictures for references for some things like the water backsplashes on that uh, third building back on the ends of that wall. Um, I'm not sure, I'm assuming that was just to keep water from overflowing off those sides down onto people below. Uh, it didn't really make any sense to me because the gutter does wrap the corners on those. Uh, but in any case, I put them on there because they're on the original. Uh, I do vary from the original on this and that. Uh, but that uh, it actually made it easy to hide the end of that end wall as well. So it worked to my benefit to go ahead and add that in there. So it's nice to have that one more roof structure done. And, uh, you know, we'll start working on the roof for this other hotel and more of the cornice work and stuff for it next time back and get the walls uh, working on that next hotel. So in any case, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, return and watch my next one with me. Like and share these videos. Uh, there's people out there that, you know, probably would like to know some of these little tidbits and, you know, while they only pick up one little thing, it's worth sharing. Uh, hit the subscribe button under this video and you'll be subscribed to my channel. Then uh, hit the bell next to that and every time a new video comes out you'll be notified and you'll get to uh, keep up with it so you don't have to go and search out the videos every single week. Um, in any case, other than that, I hope you're enjoying spending some time with your trains over this winter. Uh, it's only single digits here today and below zero at nights right now for the next several nights. 
and there's only three or four inches of snow on the ground but it's nice to be inside working on some of these chores and getting some of these things out of the way so I hope you're having the time to do that as well and not having to be outside and fighting the cold and uh, you know just enjoy this time of year uh, most people do a lot of model railroading in the winter so in any case thanks for coming back and sharing this time with me and happy model railroading <music>